Hey guys, Nicole Herrick here. Today I'm going to take you through the quick version of how to add products to your Wix online store. Now, if you don't already have the online store applied to your Wix template, you can go to the app market and choose the Wix store. Um, but if you've already got it there, um, you can go to my store and then choose add products, or you can actually click on any of these store elements. So say if I'm on a necklaces page, I can click on the store element and go manage products. Okay, so this brings me into the back end. Now, most of the online store templates have some example products in there. I'm just gonna add one from scratch. So I'm gonna go new product. This tutorial is for adding physical products, but I will do a tutorial on how to add digital files and I'll pop a link in the description to watch that uh, tutorial. So let's add a physical product. Um, now, I've created a little spreadsheet um, to make it a little bit easier for myself to enter all the details for all of the products. And it also helps me to sort of write all the descriptions individually, um, set all the prices, weigh everything at the same time, figure out my inventory of everything, um, any options and colors and sizes. Putting it all in a Excel spreadsheet like this keeps everything together for you so that you can just do it all together and all the information is saved somewhere. All right, so I'm just gonna grab the product name and I'm gonna pop it in here. You can also pop the, pop the product name in down here if you prefer. Let's add some images. So I click on the plus and I'm gonna put it into a folder and I'm gonna click upload images. Now, I want you to note here that I've put folders for all of the different products that I'm going to add into this online store. So I've got necklace images, earrings images, bracelets images. And if I click through here, you can see that each of the products, again, has its own folder. So it's really important, I think, to keep everything nice and together. Um, this one doesn't have a folder for some reason. But here's one thing I want you to note. These product images here do not have any keywords on them, and that's a really big no-no. So you can see that here I've named this one with the product name, personalized, bangle, gold, rose, oops, silver, rose gold. So this is a good example of how to actually name your products. Try and put as many key phrases in there as you can. This is a bad example. Anyway, I'm just gonna pop all those in there. So I've got open, let those upload. Okay, so they are done. Now, if I untick the first one, I can actually put them in in order. So if I want this to be my first one, this my second, third, and fourth. Okay, and now we click apply. And now it brings them in in the right order. So I want you to note here that this is gonna be your hero or main image on the actual um, gallery pages of your, uh, sorry, uh, the online store pages. If, there's also a, an option to have rollover secondary image, um, which I, th I think is great for a lot of online stores. So just keep in mind that your second image is gonna be the one that will be showing up when you do the rollover. And you can move these around if you didn't quite bring the right one into. But I'm gonna use the, the lifestyle kind of on the model shot for that one. Now over on your right hand side, you can see that I've already created some collections. So. Um, everything is automatically added to all products. That's why it's grayed out. It, it, everything has to be added to that. Um, and then uh, this one, I'm gonna add to the bracelets. Now you don't need to do these collections at this stage. You don't even need to have any created yet. You can add in all of your products individually and then go through and create collections and assign um, just by ticking a whole lot of products into one collection or several collections. So that part is really easy and can be done later on. Now, when you go down here, um, we can also add a ribbon. So it might be new arrival, um, hot off the press, something like that. Um, and we can also add the price in here. Here is our price. So this is the price for the cheapest version of this because this one has options, okay? So I'm gonna pop that in there. Now we can also put it on the sale just by ticking this and you can add a percentage discount or a dollar discount. So if I put in it's 10% off, hit enter, that brings it up as 10% off. If I wanted to do it is $20 off, hit enter, you can see it brings it down $20 cheaper. 
I'm just going to untick that for now. Now I'm going to add in my product description. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in. Now be aware that when you paste stuff in here, um, it doesn't actually sort of always come in perfectly formatted. So you might have to go through and sort of add some spacing. You can add um, some, some bolding, bold that, add some headings. You can also add links as well. So to add a link, you would just highlight any of the words that you want to link and choose link. Okay. All right, now let's talk about inventory and shipping. So if your product is just a single product, it doesn't have any options or anything, uh, but you want to uh, have a specific amount in stock so that you can make sure you don't oversell, tick this one and then you can say how many is in stock. Um, you can add a custom SKU, which is just a product number basically, and you can add the weight of the product. But if you have different options within your products like sizes or colors available then i want you to track inventory but don't put the information into this section i want you to scroll down and go to product options and we're going to tick add options so for this bangle um, we have different um, metal options so i want to choose color for this one and i'm going to call this one metal types okay and I'm going to put one as gold. And if I hit comma and then space, oh, sorry, just comma, it, it turns that into an option. And if I go silver and rose gold, there we go. So you can see here that it's kind of picked up. Okay, gold, yeah, that should be yellow. Silver should be gray, but it hasn't picked up what, ro what color rose gold would normally be. So to change that, I just need to click on that option. You can either select one from here or pick a color anywhere on the spectrum and click done. Okay, I also have two different sizes of this bangle. So I'm gonna add another option and I'm gonna choose the list input type. So I'm going to pop in here sizes and I'm gonna make the first one a 12 centimeter bracelet and then an 18 centimeter bracelet. Okay, and then you can add another one if you'd like to. So now down here is where we add um, the different prices and inventory for these different variations. So you can see here that it's already calculated all the options that I've put in and the prices. Now, if say the bigger bangles are a little bit more expensive, you can add a surcharge on top. So these might be $20 more expensive. So we add that in. And you can see that that shows up as $119.95 now. Okay, so you can add individual SKUs, individual inventories. Let's just pop some of those in there. And I'm going to leave some out of stock over here. Now with the weight, the weight is really important if you want to add ship by weight in your shipping section of your store. So say, for example, you want to um, have different postage satchels at your place of business that you're going to post everything in. So if um, all of the products add up to say uh, 600 grams and you want to pop them into an under one kilo bag, then it will automatic and you can pop in, you know, the under one kilo bag costs $7 shipping. Then the when they actually put all those products in their cart, the store shipping calculator will work it all out for you and it will automatically tell them, okay, that's $7 for shipping, thanks. So that's why it's really important to actually put in your, um, your weights in here. Oops. There we go. Okay, so also in here, you can turn off the visibility as well. So say if something was out of stock and never coming back into stock, you could set it as hidden. But if you don't have it in stock, but you still want people to see that it used to be available or will be available again, you can leave it as visible, but have zero. Okay, so let's just scroll back up because um, there is a section that we didn't look through. Okay, so custom text so this is if you have any personalized products so let's click on add to um, add the custom text field so with these bangles um, they can be stamped with some words so we're going to say 
what would you like engraved on the inside of the bangle? So that's just a little bit of helpful text so that they know what they're supposed to be typing in here. And then we might sort of say, look, you can only fit 50 characters around this. So that will limit them to what they're actually typing in there. And then we can say, you know, it has to be a handstand. So we tick this. And then we also want to add um, another one because they can also get the outside of the bangle engraved. So we'll pop that in. And this might only be a 20 character limit, um, but we might say you don't have to have the outside engraved. So we leave that as not mandatory. Okay, and you can also add additional info sections in here, like a return policy or care instructions. You don't actually have to do that on each individual product. You don't have to do it at all, but you can actually apply that to all of your products in a different section instead of having to do it individually. So that's how I would um, definitely suggest if they're all going to say the same thing, do it in another method that I'll show you. So let's click save. And let's go and have a look at what this actually looks like in the store. So I need to go to bracelets. Okay, and here is the product that I added. So you can see if I hover over it, it has the secondary image. So I'm gonna go into the product. And you can see here that I've got all the um, product images over here that I can click through. If you wanna know how to um, style these product pages to look like this instead of you know the, the default one in Wix, I'll pop a link in the description down below of how to actually change the style of product pages. So over here, um, there's more information down here. I can tick that. I can choose my metal color. So I might choose the rose gold. I can choose the size. You can see it's only available in the 12 centimeter. Um, I can, if I wanted to change that, I just want to show you how the, um, so you can see here that the rose gold goes away because I set the inv invisibility to um, not be visible and the silver has a strike through it because I said that there was none in stock. So it's still there, but there's none in stock. So, but if I choose the gold, I can choose from 12 or 18 centimeters. So what would I like engraved in here? Love is all around and the outside I might put love is forever add the quantity and then add to cut so there we go so now the next thing I want to show you is something very important um, and this is the SEO um, of individual products so I'm going to go back to my manage products I'm going to go into this particular product again. So over here on the right hand side, hiding down over here, we've got edit SEO settings. Now, so this shows you that this is what you're telling Google the product is. So this information won't show up on your actual product store, but it will show up if somebody is searching for this particular kind of product on Google, it will show up in the title and the description. So here I might say um, silver, gold, rose, gold, uh, personalized, um, and bangle. Add as many as you can up to 70 characters. Um, that's the Australian spelling people. <laughs> And then you can change this as well to be more keyword rich. And you can also change the page URL, okay? So if you wanted to call it um, personalized cuff instead, you can do that there. And then we click save. And then that's how you individually change the SEO and, and um, discoverability in Google and other um, search engines so that You've got lots of keywords in there, but it's not actually showing up in the title of the product or the description of the product. So pop lots of keywords into that. Um, keep it all making sense. Don't just fill stuff in there that has nothing to do with the product. But this is a really important tool, guys. So make sure you're utilizing it. Hope that was helpful, everyone. Um, hit me up if you've got any um, other 
Wix tutorials that you would like me to do or questions and I'll try and help you out. Thanks guys.